For the safety of your smile, use Pepsodent twice a day. See your dentist twice a year. <laughs> Lever Brothers Company presents the Pepsodent show, My Friend Irma, created by Cy Howard and starring Marie Wilson as Irma with Joan Banks as Jane. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship when other friendships have been forgotten. In Central Park, you can hear the gay songs of the cheery robins. You can see the little shoots of grass poking their way out of the ground and the tiny buds sprouting from the limbs of trees. Yes, this is the time when everything comes to life. Everything, that is, except my roommate, Irma Peterson. Now, don't get me wrong, her eyes are open, but whatever there is behind them in that adorable blonde head still sleeps like a rock. For instance, the other evening, I was reading the newspaper, and I said, Irma, honey, I see that Eddie Cantor is being sent to Milwaukee. And Irma said, Oh, I don't think that's fair. Those important men get away with everything. What do you mean, honey? Well, anybody else would be sent to Alcatraz. <laughs> Shall we go a little further? All right. Last night, we went out to dinner. And when the waiter brought our order, he said, Would you care for Lee and Perrins with your steak, miss? And Irma said, No, thank you. We don't care to eat with strangers. <laughs> Do you get the picture? That's one of the reasons I'd rather eat at home. Honey, have you finished drying the dishes? What? I said, did you finish drying the dishes? I think so. <laughs> now I've got to sweep. What? Oh, not another dish. I'm glad the knives and forks aren't breakable or we'd be eating with our hands. I'm sorry, Jane. It's Al's fault. Al's fault? Yes, Al says I'm his favorite dish, and thinking about it gets me so excited I dropped the one I had in my hands. I'm sorry, Jane. Don't go into your sorry act. Just sit there quietly. I'm trying to figure out something. Well, what do you want to know, Jane? You can always count on me. Let me see. Now, Thursday is the 31st. And Friday's April Fool today. That's right. I know it is because my boss says if there is a parade that day, I should be the one to lead it. <laughs> he picked the champ. Now, let me see. Mrs. O'Reilly, the professor, Richard, Mr. and Mrs. Horowitz upstairs. Jane, what uh, are you figuring out? Well, I don't know if it ever occurred to you, Irma, but these people have entertained us during the past few weeks, and I feel we're about due to return the compliment. It's a, a social obligation. Oh, Jane, do we have to go to jail? What are you talking about? That's how Al's friends pay their debts to society. <laughs> Please, Irma, you're distracting me. Oh, it's about time we gave a party, and I want to plan something different. Since Friday is April Fool's Day... I was thinking it'd be fun if everyone had to come disguised as their complete opposite, the person they least resembled. That would fit in with the April Fool motif. Well, I don't understand, Jane. Uh, who would I come as? Someone completely opposite from you. Say, uh, Professor Einstein. <laughs> <laughs> Your boyfriend, Al, he could come as a working man. <laughs> oh, that sounds like fun, Jane. Jane, mm -hmm. could I invite Amber Lipscott? Positively not. But Jane, Amber's a lot of fun at a party. She entertains. Amber entertains? Yeah, she tears telephone books in half. <laughs> what does she do for an encore? Throw the piano out the window? Look, once and for all, I do not want Amber at my party, understand? All right, Jane. Uh, let me know when you change your mind. Oh. Come in. It's only me, Professor Kropotkin. <laughs> Hello, Janie and Irma, my two little stars. One blinking overhead, and the other with her head on the blink. <laughs> oh, 
excuse me, a little joke I picked up from a sidewalk astronomer. <laughs> oh, Professor. I'm sorry, Jenny. Girls, could you let me have, please, a pencil and piece of paper? I got to write a note. Oh, certainly, Professor. You can use this pad with the lines on it. It's the one I always use to keep the words straight. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Madame. Uh, Mrs. O'Reilly cooked dinner for me last night, and I want she should know how I feel about it. Now, let me see. Dear Mrs. O'Reilly, the chicken was delightful, so fresh from the oven, and anyone who cooks like that deserves a lot of loving. Why, that's very pretty. Uh, come in. Hello, girls. Hello, Mrs. O'Reilly. Oh, writing a letter, Professor? Uh, no, Mrs. O'Reilly, he's writing a beautiful poem just for you. For me? Why, Professor, you're so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Can I read it now? <laughs> Certainly. Here you are. <laughs> the chicken was delightful, so fresh from the oven. And anyone who cooks like that deserves a lot of loving. Oh, <laughs> Professor John. <laughs> read on, Miss O'Reilly, read on. And what I'm loving to shove in is O'Reilly in the oven. <laughs> you shabby shakes Now, look, look. Before the two of you get into the main vault, there's something I want to tell you. Irma and I are giving an April's Fool Party Friday, and you're invited. Oh, how exciting. Is it a costume party, Janie? Uh-huh. And you must come disguised as the person you least resemble, your exact opposite. Now, let me think. The exact opposite. It's very simple. Come as a human being. <laughs> Don't be insulting. Janie, what if I put on a bathing suit and come as Miss America? I think that's perfect. After all, you was here when it was discovered. <laughs> and don't yell at me or I'll come as Columbus and prove it. Well, there's plenty of time to make up your minds. Irma, darling, what are you coming as? Well, Janie says I should come as Professor Einstein. That's clever. <laughs> but I'll have to tell my hairdresser to let my hair grow long, because I don't think there's time to grow a beard. <laughs> I mean, they... uh, we know what you mean, honey. We think. Now, remember, it's this Friday. Yeah, we'll be here. And if you don't mind, Janie, I'll bring my violin and play some gypsy music. <laughs> la, da, da, dee, da, 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 oh, la, wonderful. La, la, la. Oh, as much as I hate to admit it. When I hear that gypsy music, I love to close my eyes and whirl about madly and leap into space with wild ecstasy. That's nice. <laughs> Remind me to play for you on the roof some night. <laughs> Come on, Miss O'Reilly. Goodbye, girls. Well, now, let's see. How many guests are we going to have? Come in. Hello, dearie. <laughs> What's the matter with you, Miss Stacy? Ain't you talking to nobody? Hello, Amber. Well, you might at least say you like my new fur piece. Oh, it's very pretty, Amber. Oh, thanks, dearie. It comes from a llama in South America. Oh, one of those religious fellows who lives in a monastery? <laughs> <laughs> who knows? I never look a gift horse in the mouth. <laughs> say, what's new, Amber? Oh, Jane is giving a party next Friday. Oh! Oh, that's nice. What do I wear? Uh, well, you see, Amber, uh, uh... I don't see nothing, Miss Stacy, and let's keep this on a high plane. Because one word from you that I don't like, and I'll let you have it over the head with that washboard. <laughs> Irma, will you explain to Amber? I'm going down to the drugstore and buy a copy of Movie Star's Parade magazine. You know, dearie, it looks like that stuck-up girlfriend of yours don't want me at her party. What's the matter? Is she afraid of competition? Oh, Amber, it's nothing personal. It's just that she doesn't like you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's half your apartment, isn't it? Well, what good is that? I can't invite just half of you. Now, let me talk to Jenny some more when she comes back, Amber. Well, don't force the issue, dearie. But if she's worried about me eating like the pig she thinks I am, tell her I've been taking reducing treatments at Madame Rushmore's. I have an appointment right now. Your waist does look smaller, Amber. Oh, that's nothing. Look at my ankles. 
They're almost as slim as my knees. <laughs> oh, say, I'll be late. I'll see you later, Irma. Oh, hi, Amber. Oh, I haven't got time for chit-chat. So long. Hiya, chicken. Hello, Al, honey. What are you so happy about? Chicken, have I got a deal that's a pip. Got to clean up. What is it, Al? It's a special tea kettle for married men who like to kid around with the maid in the kitchen. A special, a special tea kettle? Uh-huh. It not only whistles when the water is boiling, it whistles when the wife is coming. <laughs> what do you think of it, chicken? Oh, Al, it's wonderful. Yeah. Decided it had to do something desperate. Can't stand that line at the unemployment office anymore. Keeps getting longer every week. It's disgusting. The moment you find something good, everybody tries to horn in on <laughs> What's that list you're reading? Oh, Jane is giving an April Fool's costume party. Everyone must come as the person they least resemble. Uh, someone exactly opposite. Ah, makes it pretty tough for me to find. You see, I have so much in common with most of the world's outstanding figures. Well, what do you mean, Al? Well, can't come as a movie star because I ain't so bad to look at myself. Well, how about some big, important politician? Well, that ain't opposite, Chick. Them guys don't work any more than I do. <laughs> Only one man can help me. Who are you calling, Al? Who else but... Hello, Joe. <laughs> ah, got a problem. How would you describe it? Huh? Honest? Ambitious? Courteous? And a fine taxpayer? Joe, ain't you laying it on a little? Huh? Oh, you think the police are tapping your wire. <laughs> hey, you hot again, Joe? Well, what for? Uh-huh. 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 Mm-hmm. Oh, what do you mean the government considers it unfair competition? Oh, you're printing your own money. <laughs> <laughs> well, I gotta get off the wire. So long, Joe. Eh, yeah, we'll have to think of a costume myself. Hey, chicken, why are you looking so depressed? Party ought to be fun. Yes, but Jane won't let me invite Amber Lipscott. What is this with Jane? Always putting on the dog with our high society friends. You tell her you got friends, too, and you love them. And taking care of them is more important than money. You got it? Got it. Good. Now, what are you going to tell Jane? I'm going to tell her that if we love those who are important to us, they'll always take our money. <laughs> Here's good news, big money-saving news about the wonderful film-removing Pepsodent, an amazingly improved film-fighting formula for brightening teeth and cleaning breath. And you can get it now at a sensational introductory bargain. Listen. Get two 25-cent tubes of new film-removing Pepsodent for only 33 cents. Yes, two 25-cent tubes in a special twin pack Regular price, 50 cents, now only 33 cents. You save 17 cents. Yes, penny for penny, ounce for ounce. New Pepsodent gives you more for your money than any other leading toothpaste. And more in results, too. For no other toothpaste can duplicate Pepsodent's new film-removing formula. It foams wonderfully, goes to work faster removing film, makes your teeth brighter and your breath cleaner. So act now. Get two 25-cent tubes of new film-removing Pepsodent for only 33 cents. More for your money than any other leading toothpaste today. Cheer up, sister, and you too, mister. Pepsodent. Pepsodent. The paste for you. back in the house, and I know that Irma must be upset about something because she's doing everything backwards. She's looking in the icebox to see if the cake she just put in has burned yet, and now she's looking in the stove for ice cubes. And I know her mind has left her head because she's just turned on the Nix Master, and she's dancing to it. <laughs> what is tormenting her, I must find out. Irma, what's bothering you? Oh, nothing. Nothing. Look, sweetie, I can't take this much longer. If you have something to say, get it out. 
Oh, I know you want to have Richard and all your swell friends here for your party Friday, but I don't see what harm it could do to have my friend Amber. You don't. Look, honey, I don't want to be mean, but once before you talked me into letting Amber come here to a party, New Year's, remember? And what happened? She threw Mr. Martin down three flights of stairs. <laughs> oh, Jane, that was part of the game. We were playing charades, and Amber was acting out good to the last drop. <laughs> this I know, but tell me, what is that dreadful stuff she uses for perfume? She doesn't know. What do you mean she doesn't know? Well, someone sent her a bottle of something for Christmas, and the label was off, and Amber won't take any chances of drinking it, so she wears it. <laughs> oh, please, Irma. Come in. Hello, Jane, Irma. Oh, Richard, I'm glad you dropped by. Look, are you going to be busy Friday night? What? No, Jane, why? Well, I'm having a little April Fool's party. Everyone is coming as the person they least represent. Well, I'd love to come, but I have a little problem. I've got to find a nurse for my mother. A nurse for your mother? Why, she's a grown woman. <laughs> Irma, be still. Richard, is your mother sick? Well, she's a little under the weather, depressed and all that. And when she's that way, she's impossible to get along with. So the doctor recommends a nurse to pamper her. Mother's fired six of them already, so I'm on my way to the agency to see if I can pick out a nurse she'll like. Well, Richard, I think I know just the girl. She used to live with me at the YWCA. She's wonderful. I'm sure your mother will like her. Oh, Jane, that's just the kind of girl I've been looking for. Huh? Uh, uh, for mother, I mean. Oh, that's better. I'll try to locate her right away. Uh, fine, fine. I'll call you up later. I'll be at the club. Uh, and don't forget Friday night. I won't. Goodbye, Jane. Bye. Bye, Irma. Goodbye, Richard. Irma, I'm going to run right down to the Y and see if I can find out where Betty White lives now. All right, Jane, but are you sure I can't invite Amber? Irma, will you please get her off your mind? Well, how? Well, uh, occupy yourself. Make some favors for our party. All right, I'll make some favors. Good. Now, have you forgotten about Amber? Yes, I have. Fine. Jane. What, sweetie? I'll make the favors if you'll do me a favor. What is it? Can I bring Amber to the party? <laughs> Goodbye, Irma Peterson. Oh. <laughs> Come in. It's only us again, me and Mrs. O'Reilly. Irma, where's Janie? She's not here, Professor. Irma, darling, what are you crying about? She won't let my girlfriend Amber come to the party. Jane doesn't think she's classy enough. Well, I think Amber should be like I am. Where I'm not wanted, I don't shove myself. You don't? No, I don't. <laughs> well, I don't know who shoved you, but whoever did it certainly pushed you out of shape. Here, Professor. No, no, please, Miss O'Reilly, can't you see Irma's in trouble? Well, then don't go insulting me, because Friday night you'll learn a thing or two. When I go to a party, the men all flock around me. They do? Yes, they do. Well, I can understand that. You look like a barrel of beer. <laughs> well, that's the last straw. No, it isn't. The last straw is on my bed, but you got the nerve to call it a mattress. <laughs> Hello, Irma. Oh, hello, Amber. Uh, this is Professor Kropotkin. Glad to see you. And this is Mrs. O'Reilly. Then why can't I come to the party? <laughs> well, I, I, I don't always look like this. I, I just got through cleaning the living room. Come on, Miss O'Reilly. I will not stand by to see you insulted. I'll help you with your costume for the party. Now, my suggestion is that you come as Marie Antoinette, and I'll just come with an axe. <laughs> Well, Emma, did your snooty roommate change your mind about me coming to the party? No, Amber, she doesn't want you, but don't feel hurt. It's all right, Emma. I'm getting used to being treated like public nothing, number one. Oh, Amber, don't get a complex like that. Take me. A lot of people go around calling me a dumb door, but they can't be so smart if they don't even know my right name. <laughs> no, dearie. What they say about me is true. I ain't got no culture. But I've tried to improve myself. I even bought that book by Emily Post. You know, them silly things like how to eat an olive and how to get rid of the pit without nobody seeing it. <laughs> and I've been practicing for weeks. Emma, would you believe it? I got a bathtub full of olive pits. <laughs> 
have to go to all that trouble. Why don't you just bring a little change purse to the table with you like I do? <laughs> and this business about the fella getting up when you're introduced, that's a lot of baloney, too. I've introduced myself to a hundred guys on the bus and not one of them got up. <laughs> and I keep trying. Well, Amber, maybe, maybe there are other books. Eh, I've read them all. I read that one on how to be a good conversationalist. Emma, do you know that the pyramids in Egypt are over 5,000 years old? And nobody collected yet? <laughs> oh, no, 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 dearie, th this ain't a club. These are uh, statues with points on the top. <laughs> yeah. So I say to the fellas, do you know the pyramids are over 5,000 years old? And they say, good, let's neck. <laughs> yeah, what's the use? Culture, smulture, every guy you meet's a vulture <laughs> well, But Amber, there, there must be something about you that's nice I, I mean... I know um, what you mean, dearie I only went with one fella that appreciated me Gerald the jockey I used to hang around the stables with him And when the horses got sick, I'd help take care of them until they got well you know, I learned a lot about medicine that way. Boys used to call me the Florence Nightingale of the stable. <laughs> Gee, I'll bet if you were Dr. Amber Lipscott, Jane would invite you to the party. Yeah. Funny, I always wanted to be a nurse, but I never got the opportunity. Hello? Uh, no, Jane, Richard hasn't called yet. What? Uh, if he calls, tell him you have the name and address of that nurse for his mother. All right. Goodbye. What's wrong? Uh, somebody sick? Yes, Richard is trying to find a nurse for his mother and... Say! Amy! Are you thinking the same thing I'm thinking? Well, Amber, I like you and I want to help you and I want Jane to respect you so she'll invite you to the party. Uh, but is it the right thing to do? Look, don't worry about it, dearie. I can handle it. The chief veterinarian at the stables used to say that when it comes to nursing, the only difference between a horse and a human is that one has a tail. <laughs> well, I, I don't know, Amber. I, I'm a little worried. Well, what can you lose? Just call up Richard's mother and leave my name. It's my big chance, Amber. All right, Amber, I'll do it. But promise me one thing. What is it? If she breaks her leg, don't shoot her. <laughs> it's a promise. Happy days are here again. Da -da -da -da. Well, honey, this is more like it. A little while ago, you were in the dumps, but now you're in the clouds. Well, I'm certainly glad to see you're no longer angry about Amber not coming to my party Friday. I'm not so sure that Amber won't be at the party. <laughs> Wait a minute. Irma, you didn't invite her after what I told you. Oh, of course not, Jane. But maybe someone else will invite her. What are you talking about? Oh, fiddly-dee. <laughs> Irma, I don't like it when you say fiddly-dee. Because I know that when you're fiddling, Rome must be burning. <laughs> oh. oh, dear, you've got me so jumpy, I don't know what to expect. Come in. Jane, I want to have a talk with you. Why, Richard, you're angry. What's wrong? Plenty. Where did you get that so-called nurse you sent mother? Richard, I, I don't understand. Neither do I. She wants my mother to run three furlongs every morning. <laughs> but, Richard, I, I can't understand that. Betty White is a registered nurse. Betty White? I just had mother on the phone an hour ago at Long Island, and she says the nurse's name is Amber Lipscott. Amber Lipscott? But that's not the girl I... Oh, what's the difference? Mother's probably fired her by now and had a nervous breakdown. But, Richard, I can't... I, I mean... I... Oh, Irma, what have you done to me? Don't let me stand here like a fool in front of Richard. Explain. Tell him. Well, uh... uh you see, Richard, it, it's sort of like this. Amber wasn't invited to the party because Emily Post has a bathtub full of olive pits and George <laughs> Nightingale gave her a seat to the bus driver. Will you please stop before I need a nurse? Oh, Richard, Richard, will you ever forgive me? I... Come in. Telegram from Miss Stacy. For me? I'll take it. Gee, I hope it's bad news. 
Anything to forget what's just happened. What? Richard, listen to this. It's from your mother. Mother? Yes. Dear Jane, thanks for the wonderful nurse you just sent me. Never in my life have I met such a character. <laughs> I have laughed so much I haven't had time to remember I'm sick. But she's so extreme in her suggestions. Personally, don't you think I'm too old to take boxing lessons? <laughs> My deepest gratitude, and if I am well enough, I will come to your party... With my nurse, naturally. Oh, no. <laughs> I guess that's all Mother needed right along to get her mind off herself. You see, Jane, you said Amber wasn't good enough for anything, but you were wrong. She's got Mrs. Rhinelander out of her mind. <laughs> Don't miss the sensational bargain introducing new film-removing Pepsodent toothpaste. Get two 25-cent tubes of new Pepsodent for only 33 cents. You save 17 cents. Yes, two 25-cent tubes in a special twin pack, regular price 50 cents, only 33 cents. Penny for penny, ounce for ounce, new Pepsodent gives you more than any other leading toothpaste. More in results, too. No other toothpaste can duplicate new Pepsodent's film-removing formula. It foams amazingly, goes to work faster removing film, making teeth brighter, breath cleaner. Hurry, offer limited. Get two 25-cent tubes of new film-removing Pepsodent for only 33 cents. Pep, pep, Pepsodent toothpaste bites film on teeth and cleans breath too. Pep, pep, Pepsodent toothpaste gives film on teeth the old skidoo. it again. She has dragged me through mental fire and water, and I've come out smiling. Why? I have to. Everyone else is so happy. As for Amber Lipscott, she'll be at my party because naturally I can't hurt Mrs. Rhinelander's feelings, and because of my weakened condition, I've let Al talk me into inviting Mushy. Irma, if this party is a success, I am going to be the most surprised girl in the world. Oh, Jane, I'm so excited. Friday night, the blue bloods will mix with the red bloods. Well, what's so exciting about that? This will be my first party in Technicolor. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, red blood or blue blood, I'll really need a mental transfusion living with my friend Irma. <laughs> My Friend Irma is produced and directed by Cy Howard. Park Levy writes the script with Stanley Adams and Roland McLean, and it is brought to you by Pepsi and Toothpaste with Irium, another fine product of Lieber Brothers Company. Marie Wilson is starred as Irma, with Joan Banks as Jane. The part of Al was played by John Brown. Hans Conried was heard as Professor Kropotkin, and Gloria Gordon as Mrs. O'Reilly. Music was under the direction of Lud Gluskin. Ladies, make your next permanent a rave home permanent. This new personalized home permanent from the famous Pepsodent Laboratories eliminates all guesswork. With Rave, and only with Rave, you get the easy-to-use dial-a-wave chart that gives you the one right wave for your kind of hair. Rave waving times are up to twice as fast as ordinary home permanents. Yet a Rave wave is gentler, long-lasting, more natural-looking from the very first day. The complete Rave kit is $2. Rave refill kits, $1. Both kits contain the easy-to-use dial-a-wave chart. Dial your rave number for a personalized home permanent. Tune in one hour earlier next week and listen to the Lux Radio Theater, followed by the Pepsi and Show, My Friend Irma, both brought to you by Lever Brothers Company. Wendell Niles speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.